Hi and welcome to the Cancelled News. I'm Adam Yenser, the only news anchor who didn't break down in tears of joy this week. Uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, and follow because this is the only platform where I'm gaining followers. On Twitter and Facebook, I'm losing followers because I openly supported President Trump. Uh, but I'll be honest, the worst part about openly supporting Trump on social media was not the threat of being cancelled or unfriended or falsely called a Nazi. It's that I constantly have to see targeted ads for stuff like this. Patriotic Eagle and German Shepherd quilt set. And listen, if you're on the left, you cannot laugh at that if you posted this picture. This abomination is just as bad. But I have noticed that now that Joe Biden is in charge, the entire mainstream news media has entirely changed their tone. Now they're like happy and joyful and hopeful, where for the last four years, all left-wing news anchors did is try to make pointed comments and then stare angrily at the camera for 10 seconds afterwards. Don Lemon would do it, Brooke Baldwin would do it, Chris Cuomo would do it. So now that Biden's in charge, I'm going to do it. Anyway, here's what's in the news. On Wednesday, Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th president of the United States, and Kamala Harris was sworn in as the soon-to-be 47th president of the United States. Our long national nightmare is finally beginning. Kamala Harris is now the first black vice president of the United States, although some people have argued that since her ancestors didn't come from Africa but actually came from Jamaica and India, it would be more accurate to refer to her as the first fusion vice president. Joe Biden's inauguration had the same feel and energy as much of his campaign, and by that I mean there were very few people in attendance. Joe Biden got choked up and cried during a farewell speech in Delaware before leaving for Washington, D.C. He then delivered a farewell speech at the Capitol and another farewell speech to his staff inside. At his age, every speech is a farewell speech. Joe Biden was denied a government plane to fly to Washington, D.C. for his inauguration, and he had to fly private. Luckily, his friend Bill Clinton lent him a plane. Biden's expected to unveil a path to citizenship for millions of illegal immigrants in his first days as president. Now the path begins in Honduras, then goes up through Guatemala and Mexico, and ends by passing the one piece of wall President Trump finished. President Biden nominated Pennsylvania's Rachel Levine to be the first transgender Assistant Secretary of Health, and the 16th Assistant Secretary of Health, who's actually a man. Now, I don't really have the balls to make any more jokes about that, but I think Rachel might. Country music star Garth Brooks sang a beautiful a cappella version of Amazing Grace at the inauguration, leaving everyone pissed that he didn't sing Friends in Low Places. As one of his final acts in office, racist white supremacist Donald Trump pardoned Kodak Black, Kwame Kilpatrick, and Lil Wayne. Now, Lil Wayne was facing federal charges for possession of this outfit. In a related story, Amanda Bynes says that she is now a rapper. She goes by Lil Relevance. President Trump also released Harry O. Harris, a friend of Snoop Dogg's and the founder of Death Row Records, which will now go by Commuted Sentence Records. The media noted that Donald Trump looked small, defeated, and isolated as he left Washington for the last time. And they're right, this sad, pathetic man will now live out his days at one of his six multi-million dollar homes with his supermodel wife occasionally returning to judge a bikini contest or beauty competition, while only 75 million people still support him. For the first time ever, a Michelin star was awarded to a vegan restaurant. According to Michelin, the vegan food tastes just like their tires. A doctor in Colorado now says that two masks is better than one mask, but three masks goes too far. Five is right out. One of Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candles reportedly exploded in a British woman's home causing an inferno, and like Gwyneth Paltrow's actual vagina, it took 20 firefighters. Donald Trump's daughter Tiffany announced that she's engaged to businessman Michael Bulos. Trump congratulated his future son-in-law, adding, it's too bad you didn't get the hot one. A California man who says he was afraid to travel because of COVID lived undetected in the Chicago airport for three months, now, I actually once spent three months in the Chicago airport waiting for the shuttle to the Delta Terminal. After Ben Affleck broke up with his girlfriend, Ana de Armas, garbage men were seen removing a life-size cutout of her from his home and carrying in a life-size cutout of Matt Damon. 
The Biden administration plans to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, which is how much a loaf of bread will cost three years from now. A man in Britain has offered $70 million to dig through a city landfill to try and find a Bitcoin hard drive that he accidentally threw away. But that's disgusting. I can't think of any amount of money that would make it worth it to dig through that many copies of Daily Mail. Meanwhile, several men in Los Angeles are asking to dig through the garbage of Ben Affleck. QAnon supporters were expecting the inauguration to end with Trump declaring martial law, Space Force coming in to arrest the ring of elite pedophiles, then trying them before military tribunals and sending them to Guantanamo Bay. Now, as much as I hate this stupid conspiracy theory, and as much as you may hate Trump or support Biden, you have to admit there was a little part in the back of your brain that was hoping it would happen. It would have been fun to see. QAnon supporters reportedly even discussed disguising themselves as troops to infiltrate the National Guard. They also discussed disguising themselves as hospice nurses to infiltrate the Biden White House. Forces in Guatemala are trying to break up a large immigrant caravan heading for the U.S. In order to help break up the caravan, they've told local children that it's filled with candy. A gay American couple was deported from Bali after tweeting that the Indonesian island was queer-friendly. Now that the gay couple has been deported, the Indonesian island is far less Bali, 